Welcome to XM.com for the weekly outlook. I'm Cristina Marujas and joining me today is investment analyst Mario Sechiquiriacos. We'll be having a look at the week ahead and it's going to be a jam-packed week, Mario's, with two central bank meetings, a potential breakthrough in the Brexit talks and hopefully more clues on whether more financial support is on its way. So let's start with that. Investors are looking at data releases and hope that the numbers will force the Federal Reserve and Congress to deliver more fiscal stimulus before the year end. Is that the most plausible scenario right now? Hello, Christina. Yes, I'd say that's a very plausible scenario. And I would add that the markets are seeing a situation where you've got the vaccines. So next year is looking much better. And they're thinking, sure, the next few months might be difficult, but at some point we'll get the vaccine. Everything goes back to normal. And in the meantime, we can always count on the central banks to provide more and more liquidity to keep things glued together in a sense. I think we are at a juncture where the markets perceive almost everything as bullish. The force of liquidity and stimulus is just so great that the markets want to put a positive spin to things. For example, take economic data. We're in a situation where if you get strong economic data, let's say out of the US, that's fantastic and the markets rally. If you get weak data, then suddenly there's more pressure on the Fed to deliver more. There's more pressure on the politicians to deliver bigger relief packages, which can also be spun as a positive for the market and a negative for the dollar, of course. So for me, this doesn't mean that the risks have vanished. It just means that all the liquidity is acting like a drag in a sense for the markets and it's masking the risks. So for now, I think this situation is going to continue. The biggest variable for the markets is how much will be pumped by the European Central Bank, by the Fed, and how much Congress will deliver. And as long as all this liquidity keeps flowing, I think that the markets will continue to party and that riskier assets will perform relatively well, whereas safe havens might lose some of their shine. You mentioned the European Central Bank, so let's turn to the central bank meetings. This week has two such meetings in store, one of them, of course, being the ECB, which meets on Thursday, and markets are anticipating it will deliver another dose of stimulus. How will that affect the euro? Well, here's the situation the ECB finds itself in. It already pretty committed to doing all this stimulus at its last meeting. President Lagarde came out, said something like the risks are to the downside, Europe is locking down again, we will most definitely deliver more stimulus in December. That has been priced in. It's been more than a month already. So the markets took that signal, they priced it in, and the worrisome part for the ECB is that the euro continues to rise. Now that's an issue if you're at the central bank because a stronger currency means softer inflation and softer growth. It's the last thing you want in a crisis, really. Now the question is, what can the ECB do to bring the euro back down? Normally, you would expect them to deliver something more than the market expects. So the markets right now are expecting around 500 billion euros in QE next week. If you are the ECB and you want to sink the euro, you could deliver something bigger, 750 billion or even 1 trillion. The catch is that that's easier said than done because the ECB is deeply divided between hawks and doves. So I very much doubt that the policymakers from Germany, from instance, or from France will go along with such ultra dovish measures. So long story short, I see the potential for a market a disappointment where the markets are disappointed that the ACB has under-delivered in a sense and therefore I see some scope for a positive reaction in the euro. Staying of course on the central bank front, the Bank of Canada also meets this week on Wednesday to be exact seen some volatility in the loony lately due to disagreements in the OPEC Plus alliance. Can the Bank of Canada offer some support to the Canadian dollar? Maybe, but only marginally. So the Bank of Canada, the last time it met, it scaled back its QE slightly, the economy is improving, and since then there have been a lot of positive improvements. We've had decent economic data, the vaccines were announced, and oil prices, which is crucial for Canada, have risen very substantially. So I think the bank is unlikely to take any action. Maybe on the margin they will adopt of the slightly more optimistic tone that could boost the loony a little bit, but the bigger driver for the currency will be how the stock market performs and how oil prices perform. And last but not least, let's have a look at Brexit. The latest headlines suggest we are closer than ever to a Brexit deal, as both the UK and EU seem to be willing to close the gap in their differences. Is the deal likely this week, and how will that affect the pound? 
I think the deal is quite likely, and I think that the markets view it this way. So there have been all sorts of headlines lately. We're making progress. We're not making that much progress. It seems that the deal is almost done, but not quite. So the coming week will be an exciting period. On Monday, the UK will bring back the internal markets bill, the very divisive bill that would violate international law. It will be brought back to Parliament for a vote. Now, if that succeeds, that would send a very bad signal to the EU. It would send a signal that the UK is negotiating in bad faith. It's trying to get an agreement on the one hand, but simultaneously trying to rewrite the previous agreement by itself. Monday is a very crucial day to watch. If that vote passes, then the EU might be less inclined to compromise. And the real deadline for the week is from Thursday. There is an EU summit. That is probably the last date where EU leaders can approve any deal. So it's do or die time in the Brexit negotiations. As far as the pound is concerned, I would say that a lot of optimism has been pricing already. Therefore, if we get a deal, we might see some more upside in the pound, but it's likely to be relatively modest. Whereas if we see the talks fall apart, that would be a surprise for the market and we could see a more severe downside reaction in the pound. Marius, thank you for joining me today. This was the weekly outlook here at XM.com. Thanks for watching.